Dear brethren and friends, Wakeman here. Humility lets us be modest, but never losing the connection with our soul. Confidence is our ability to understand reality and truth around us. Because we live in a narcissist cave where deception is everywhere, preventing us from knowing the truth from God, we stumble on gaslight. The key aspect here is being humble and recognize when we trip in gaslight. We are here to learn the difference between right and wrong, and between good and evil. We learn from our mistakes, and we need to humble ourselves before God, confessing our faults. When we confess and repent for our sins before God, we start forgiving ourselves for our faults, and seeking God to quicken us in His truth. We all make mistakes, and believed in gaslight and deceptions. Don't let this condemn you and stop your walk with Jesus Christ. Because this is exactly what the enemy, the first narcissist, also known as Lucifer, wants from you. I hope this short sermon by David Wilkerson inspires you to strengthen your relationship with Jesus Christ in humbleness and confidence. God bless you. Please remember, Jesus Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Now I'm going to read it again. Sin. An unquenched fire in the flesh. A smoldering ember. An unquenched ember. And this is only for those who want to go on with him. This is only for those who say, whatever the cost, I want his fullness. Whatever it takes, Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. This is only for men who have a cry for righteousness. If you want to be like the crowd and go your way, you won't hear a word of this. But if God's been stirring you, you've been walking in brokenness before the Lord, you're going to hear it. You'll hear it. Ezekiel 15. Verse 7, I've set my face against, though they've come out of the fire, the fire will consume them. In other words, there's been a sort of deliverance. They've come out of this flashing fire. Let's suppose it was lust, the lust of the flesh. The lust itself has not been removed. There is still a lingering ember of lust. He's been delivered from the fire, and yet at the end, the fire consumes him because the embers are still burning. And the trouble is, we're going around flashing our x-rays and not getting the operation. X-rays don't heal. Isaiah 33, 13. You who are far away, hear what I have done. You who are near, acknowledge my might. Sinners in Zion are terrified. Trembling has seized the godless. Now listen to this. Who among us can live with the consuming fire? Who among us can live with continual burning? Where's a man who, in his early ministry, has this thing break out in him, this failure, this breaking down of righteousness in the life, and it's not dealt with. It's continued year after year. It's covered and it's covered. There's layer after layer after layer of subjection. There's layer after layer. And I enjoyed what our pastor said. I'm so glad to hear that this morning, how God was getting through all those layers. He's doing that through all of us, getting through those layers that we've built up. Layer after layer of having pushed it down and not gotten to the very smoldering embers, that charring process that outwardly your branch can look so good, but there's a charring inside. It's burning inside and it's coming out until suddenly that black spot and there'll be a flashpoint. The Lord began to show me this past week, even, in, in this search, because I'm just now coming to the greatest hunger He's ever given to me to go on with Him, and He's been showing me some things that He was not ready to show me before. I said, well, Lord, I prayed all these months, and I've been open and coming to light. Why didn't you show it to me? He said, you weren't listening yet. You weren't prepared to hear this, and if you'll hear this, you'll cross the line, and then I can use you. And he's showing me some things that have been there for years in my early ministry, some mistakes I made, some weaknesses I allowed. Saul was destroyed because of that smoldering ember. Saul was destroyed because of it. And there's a whole catalog of men in this book that have been destroyed because of it. He said, you've got a heart toward me now. You've made up your mind. You're going all the way with me. But I'm going to let you be afflicted. I'm going to allow things in your life that confuse you. Because I'm trying to get at something. It's a furnace of affliction. But then he says, when you're in that affliction, and perhaps even coming out, then if you've developed a listening ear, I'm going to show you that you've got to pluck out those roots now. There's got to be a circumcision of your heart. 
And I, I guess I've been rejoicing because I thought there was no evidence. I wasn't doing it outwardly. But you can still have those roving eyes. You can still have that smoldering ember. You know, God wants to circumcise that. He wants to get at that root and have that plucked out. Absolutely plucked out so that God says, Brother, sister, you've crossed that line. I know your heart's for me now. I know your heart's for me now. I proclaim to you new things from this time, from even hidden things which you've not known. Listen, I told you the glory of his name is linked to the holiness of our character, and that lingering evil in us can profane his name. How do I get that smoldering ember? Because there was no outward expression of it. I thought I could live with it. The Lord says, no, now I want the root. I want the root of it. I want you to have total freedom. I don't want you ever feared again in your life, ever. I want you to walk anywhere, look any man in the eye. I want you to walk in that freedom. If you come to light, he'll show it to you. He dug it out of me and said, David, I'm going to get the roots out of you. Usually, most of the time, it has to do with lust. That's right. Lust, which comes from the root of pride. All these sins come from pride. Do you have a hearing ear this morning? He's given you the listening ear so that he can tell you what that last root is that hinders you from being totally used. And I'll tell you what, he's not about to pour on you a spirit of usefulness with that thing still smoldering. Because if he does and he raises your branch and you can be seen among the masses of the branches high and lifted up, even though it's to the glory of his name, it's going to break out there at that height and you'll bring reproach to his name beyond anybody else. He'll not use you. He'll let you go so far. He'll cause you just to level off and then there'll be a slow decline. You'll wind up in a wilderness and you'll start withering because you're not hearing. I just come to the light. Only the holy are as bold as a lion. Only the righteous. Your boldness comes from your righteousness of Christ. Your walk with God is what gives you your boldness. Circumcise yourself. Heart. Lord, circumcise us. Saints, I feel God doing something profound in our hearts. I'm glad I came just for what he, he's been doing in me. He's really been doing something in me. I know he's doing something in your heart right now. Hallelujah. Lord, go deep this morning. Forgive us for our gossiping lips, our unclean lips, unclean hearts. Lord, if our lips are unclean, our hearts are not being dealt with. Help us to deal with it this morning. He wants all the sin out, purged, so we walk in freedom. But let's just say, Lord, we love you. Thank you for your mercy this morning. And you've been talking to us in love. Thank you, Jesus.